1 through 3. As we bless Abraham's physical seed through Jacob, whose descendants will live among us while preserving their own Hebrew race. We then seek to rival the black pope's control over Jerusalem, which includes the removal of his CFR-led Masonic Sunni Islamic Arab leaders, as well as his Masonic Jewish labor Zionists, covertly working together in dividing the Lord's land promised to the racial descendants of the twelve sons of Jacob. For these modern-day Freemasonic quote-unquote assassins and Templars rule Rome's quote, revived Latin kingdom of Jerusalem, unquote, i.e. Israel, for the benefit of the white pope overseen by the black pope. Lastly, this broadcast will seek to expose the power of Satan's counter-reformation, socialist communist company of Jesus, now directing every government on earth through high-level illuminized Freemasonry. Its designs and plots will be elucidated with historic, irrefutable citations spanning over 300 years. All peoples of whatever race will benefit if the biblical principles espoused on this broadcast are applied to themselves in accordance with the Word of God, the AV 1611 Reformation English Bible for English-speaking peoples. Now to begin. On Monday we cover the Jesuit war on the white race, having founded white Protestant nations of Western civilization. And today we're going to cover how the Jesuits, in control of Washington, since no later than the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, and since no later than its real consolidation of power under America's first real de facto Roman Emperor, Teddy Roosevelt, that the Jesuits have used their 14th Amendment, uh, Holy Roman, 14th Amendment, corporate fascist, socialist communist American empire to restore the Pope's temporal power around the world with two very intriguing swords. One of those swords is socialist fascism, which Bismarck called black socialism, because the black robes, the priests, were the big advocates of what they called Christian socialism. So Bismarck called it black socialism. And the other one that Bismarck called red socialism, which was communist, communism, i.e. red China. Uh, the flag of China being red, the flag of the Soviet Union being red, uh, communism would have a blood-red hue in its symbolisms. And going back to the days after Karl Marx and his uh, unleashing of the manifesto, financed by Engels, that white Gentile out of England, and promoted by the Jesuits who were controlling the cartel capitalists, this uh, movement for communism was openly condemned by the papacy openly condemned by the papacy, the papacy being an enemy of communism, but at the same time the papacy would be an open advocate of fascism. So what is the real policy of the papacy with regard to socialist fascism and socialist communism? Socialist communism is the end game. The Vatican controlling high-level Freemasonry, remembering that Cardinal Rampala who was the Secretary of State, Cardinal Secretary of State for uh, uh, Pope Leo XIII, was a high-level Freemason and a member of the OTO. The OTO is intimately involved in establishing Soviet communism. As Aleister Crowley of British Intelligence was also OTO. As Aleister Crowley was intimately acquainted with the Fabian Socialists, uh, Sidney and Beatrice Webb, and a host of others, H.G. Wells, and H.G. Wells being a tutor of Lenin. So high-level Freemasonry is going to put in motion this international workers of the world, blah, 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 communist movement that is really put upon Russia and China and other nations from the top by virtue of the Pope's power over those governments through his intelligence communities. That is the end game of Rome. Anything contrary to that is an illusion. Anything believed, such as the Pope is really against communism and the Jesuits are anti-communist, is all an illusion. The Jesuits have been the great communists since they perfected their reductions in Paraguay from 1609 to 1759. They had some 59 Paraguayan reductions where they implemented the principles of communism there, first gleaned from Sir Thomas More's Utopia. And Sir Thomas More was a traitor to the Protestant king, uh, king uh, who founded the Anglican Church. Uh, so King George, uh, no, it wasn't King George, King Henry VIII. 
So Sir Thomas More was a traitor and he was a contemporary of Ignatius Loyola. And Loyola was a contemporary of uh, of the, the Sir Thomas More who wrote Utopia. So we have communism coming to fruition, coming to perfection under the Argus eye of the Jesuit order in South America, then to be uh, 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 statutory eyes put in, put in uh, uh, the Communist Manifesto uh, through uh, the works of Marx and Engel, tutored in the British Museum. So the Jesuits are the masters of communism. Liberation theology is co Jesuit communism. Black theology of Mr. Cohn, which is repeated by Jeremiah Wright, is Jesuit communism. Barry Davis Obama sitting under black theology and liberation theology means he is a Jesuit communist. And the policies that he is implementing is Jesuit communism, backed by certain supporters like that Jesuit-controlled Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, and the Jesuit-controlled Joe Biden, his right-hand man, the Vice President. President. So this is how it's secretly working. Commun America is communist. America, if you're going to go to college, you're the first two years in college is the pseudo-social sciences, as the great Zygmunt Dobbs wrote about in his, great, his book, The Great Deceit. How the first two years, if you're going to get your AA, you've got to be well-versed in socialist communism. And thus, we are not surprised to see that Canada is also communist. The white Anglo-Saxon Protestant nation of Canada is communist, thanks to the Jesuit uh, Pierre, uh, Pierre, who was the prime minister several years ago, Trudeau, Pierre Trudeau. And he was advised by a Jesuit, a very high Jesuit professor of the Fourth Val. So the Jesuits have implemented communism in America. They've implemented communism in Canada. They've implemented communism in the Dutch Republic, in Holland, in the Netherlands. They've implemented communism in Sweden. They've implemented communism in England and in Scotland. All the historic, great, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant nations have had their middle class destroyed through the policies of the Jesuits, which are in fact communistic, implemented through the governments of the West here. Those governments here, controlled by the Council on Foreign Relations, in, Europe, in uh, England, controlled by the Chatham House, the Royal Institute for International Affairs. That's how the Jesuits implement all their Fabian socialist communism here in America and in Britain. Well, now the topic for today is how the Jesuits are destroying the white race of these historic white Protestant nations through their implementation of communism. Communism. Now, this is very important that we get a handle on this because we have been lied to and will be continue to be lied to by the press, be it the right-wing fascist Fox News or the left-wing communist CNN. Either way, we're going to be lied to because neither one of them will tell us that Soviet communism was, was uh, financed and coddled by American cartel capitalists and Washington controlled by Rome. You will never be told that. You will never be told that the State Department controlled by Cardinal Spellman in 1949 facilitated the rise of Chairman Mao, the mass murderer, the greatest murderer of the 20th century, killing 60 million of his own people. Not to mention millions, hundreds of thousands of Koreans in the Korean War, hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese in the Vietnam War, and Cambodians and Laotians and others, all at the hand of Jesuit communism, facilitated and financed and encouraged by this American government in Washington, Rome on the Potomac. So now, let's review a little bit. We know that communism was built by the West, particularly London and Washington. Now, my white Slavic brothers, you need to understand this. You need to get this ingrained in you. All you Romanians, you Slavic Romanians, all you Slavic Croatians, you Slavic Serbians, you Slavic Russians, all you my white Slavic brethren, you have been oppressed by communism, shoved down your throat by the Pope of Rome through his Anglo-American enterprise controlled by the Jesuits, 
Remember, the Pope controls the CIA. He controls the KGB. He controls British intelligence. He controls German intelligence. All these intelligence agencies are united together at the top by high-level Freemasons and high-level Knights of Malta kissing the Pope's ring. That's how it works. There are no them and us. There are no East versus West. That's all nonsense for the strictly pedestrian who does not understand at the top the Jesuits are aspiring for a world government, a world monarchy under the Pope, and therefore use nations to subjugate other nations. Well, here in the early 20th century, the Jesuits, after they had subjugated us, with the assassination of Lincoln and the enthronement of, F of uh, Teddy Roosevelt after the assassination of McKinley, they then used their American empire to subjugate the nations of Europe and Russia and China. America, the Holy Roman 14th Amendment corporate fascist for the, for the big super cartel capitalist that couldn't care less about us common low white folk, and so the socialist communists, those are the policies put upon us folk here in the empire. It's the corporate fascist socialist communist American empire that has been used by the Pope as the hammer of Rome to subjugate all the nations of the world under the Pope of Rome.